All right, welcome back everybody. My name is Pratesh here with Kaizen Crypto bringing you guys another video. So here today I wanted to share with you all some of my thoughts on Bitcoin's energy problem and how Cardano plans on addressing this issue. So lots of people are going back and forth about the debate between proof of work and proof of stake and how mining Bitcoin is extremely expensive and how Cardano plans on addressing that. What I wanted to do here in this video today is show you some things that we're looking at based on what we're seeing with the testnet for Cardano and how that plays in to the bigger picture for cryptocurrencies. So all of that is gonna be here in this video, so stay tuned. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys are all doing well. Today is April 14th of 2020. In this video, talking about Bitcoin's mining issue with uh, power consumption, I've got a newsletter pulled up. This is actually an article from Science Direct. I'm gonna be sure to link to this down in the description talking about Bitcoin's growing energy problem. So long story short, just gonna do a TLDR for you guys. So essentially he goes through and he talks about all the different costs as far as operating with the hardware and maintaining the network. He's going on to talk about um, ant miners, the cost to upkeep that hardware, energy consumption. So I just wanted to share with you guys his conclusion with all the research that he's put into it. I definitely recommend you guys do check it out. But uh, essentially, this paper has outlined various methods that are currently used in determining the current and future electricity consumption of the Bitcoin network. These methods tell us that the Bitcoin network consumes at least 2.55 gigawatts of electricity currently so that it could reach a consumption of 7.67 gigawatts in the future, making it comparable with countries such as Ireland and Austria. Additionally, economic models tell us that Bitcoin's electricity consumption will gravitate towards the latter figure. A look at Bitcoin miner production estimates suggest that this figure could already be reached in 2018. So guys, this article is back to 2018, so this research is a little bit dated, but what we're looking at here with the Bitcoin network processing just 200,000 transactions per day. This means that the average electricity consumed per transaction equals at least 300 kilowatt hours and could exceed 900 kilowatt hours per transaction by the end of 2018. The Bitcoin development community is experimenting with solutions such as the Lightning Network to improve the throughput of the network, which may alleviate the situation. So, that are that is going to be some of the things that many people who are in the crypto space are uh, concerned about with the bitcoin network and one thing that we can see also very relevant today is the bitcoin block reward having so we shall see how that all plays in the energy consumption narrative uh, but going over to cardano so what i wanted to share with you guys here this is a cool uh, tool that I found. Uh, so pooltool.io has a lot of information regarding the testnet for Cardano. So we're currently on the Shelly incentivized testnet. What we can see here, there is a tab that allows you to click on explore pools. So by clicking on this, it gives you the option to sort based on operating system and infrastructure. So this will tell you what the stake pool operators are using in terms of hardware to maintain the network. And what we can see most notably is that most of these um, uh, servers are base metal servers, or bare metal servers, sorry. And then you've also got VPS services like uh, Amazon Cloud, Microsoft Cloud, DigitalOcean, um, Google Cloud, and then right underneath that is low cost single board computers such as the Rock Pi. So we're gonna talk about all of that. As far as energy consumption, where I wanted to start. So we know that Bitcoin has this issue with the energy consumption, and we can see that Cardano is aiming to solve these problems. So what does this information tell us? So we can see that there are about 50 bare metal servers that are on the incentivized testnet. So that makes up a majority of what is operating on the network. Most of the operating system is Linux. That's to be expected, that's fair. Um, so yeah, there's lots of information from this data here telling us that bare metal servers on Linux 
operating systems is what people are using for the incentivized testnet. What is a bare metal server? So let's take a look. Um, I actually learned quite a bit from looking at this article as well. Link also down in the description below if you guys want to check it out. This is talking about the difference between bare metal servers and virtual private servers. So if you are interested in running a node on the incentivized testnet, or even if you're looking to get started once we hit mainnet, this is hopefully something that you'll find valuable, essentially going over some of the key differences. So let's take a look here. Uh, if performance is your top priority, you might get more bang for your buck with a bare metal server. Bare metal servers can offer better value for demanding applications and heavy workloads such as big data processing, where physical machines will generally be more cost effective than VPS hosting. It is also important to note that although bare metal servers are not themselves virtualized, they still offer the flexibility of a cloud platform. Bare metal server billing is based on per hour usage as opposed to the monthly or yearly terms associated with dedicated server hosting. Bare metal servers can also be spun up in a few minutes and paused at any time with no upfront costs or contract periods. This is a key strength of bare metal hosting, great price, performance combined with enhanced flexibility. So for larger workloads, even if they're only temporary, a bare metal server is ideal. All right, very cool. And if we take a look at VPS, versatile, practical, and scalable. Even if they can't match the pound for pound power of bare metal servers, VPS are ideal for a wide range of tasks. VPS hosting allows you to add resources for individual virtual machines, uh, which allows for vertical scaling or add whole new servers for horizontal scaling at any time in a matter of minutes. This inherent scalability makes VPS hosting better suited for variable workloads where the ability to dynamically scale performance is more important than sheer horsepower. So for example, you might have an online shop with highly variable traffic with regular spikes at certain times or during seasonal events and sales. In this situation, the option to strengthen VMs or spin up new ones at a moment's notice is highly beneficial not least because you only pay for the exact performance level you need per minute. Another great use case for BPS is test environments for web development. When testing, servers may only be required for a few days or hours, and even then they probably won't need to be super high performance machines. VMs are ideal when you need a quick, cost-effective server environment that can be turned on, used, and switched off according to your workflow. So take from that what you will. Um, you know, lots of good information there if you are interested. I'm gonna leave a link for you guys. That way you can check it out if you do decide to get more information about that. So now we took a look at Pool Tool. So we saw bare metal servers, we saw VPS as a very common option. And next we see low power cost SBC. What is that? A single board computer is something like a Rock Pi or a Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's essentially um, a mini computer and a lot of enthusiasts and hobbyists use it to make certain projects. And in this instance, we're able to operate a stake pool using a rock pie. So I wanted to share with you guys that. Uh, if you guys do follow the channel, I wanted to let you know I've got my stake pool up and running. We're actually running on a rock pie. So this has been a fun project for me. I think you know as we go over into the mainnet, this is going to be more of a serious proposition. So I'm definitely going to be looking at something like a bare metal server or VPS service. But uh, you know, really just to gain experience, the Rock Pi has been a really fun project. So that's what we see here. You know, it's the big brother to the Raspberry Pi. Essentially, it's got a faster processor, it's got faster memory, uh, faster gigabit Ethernet port. So really, a uh, really really nice power consumption option when it comes to operating the Cardano stake pool if you are running one on a uh, low power consumption machine. So this is it right here. Uh, link is also down in the description if you guys do want to decide to build one for yourself. Check it out. Really, really fun. Um, lots of content and material from the community so you guys can get yours up and running as well. So now as far as power consumption for this, I went ahead and took to the forums on the interwebs and found that as far as running a Raspberry Pi, you know, comparing the Rock Pi and the Raspberry Pi, I think they're very similar. Um, keep in mind, if you are running peripherals, you'll need to account for those as well. But this is just speaking generally for the board itself. So this guy took the liberty of doing some math for us. Uh, granted, this is some um, older information, so take from it what you will. I'm sure that as we've progressed here with technology, 
Uh, things have changed a little bit in terms of efficiency, but the Raspberry Pi uses about five watts maximum, um, although in theory it shouldn't go any higher than 3.5 watts, so I'm looking for a worst case, and I've read that the Pi will shut down at one amp. So let's say about five watts max. Okay, at this rate it would take 200 hours to use one kilowatt. There are 8,766 hours in a year, and in the case you're on a leap year, 8,790. Uh, 8, Therefore, the Raspberry Pi at this point would use 43.95 kilowatt hours per year. And this guy's based in the UK. The most expensive energy tariff in the UK is about 20 pence per kilowatt hour. Therefore, the maximum theoretical amount a Raspberry Pi should ever cost in a year is about eight pounds and 79. So yeah, take from that what you will, maybe less than 10 bucks wherever you are in the world to be able to run a Raspberry Pi or a Rock Pi the entire year, 24 seven, 365. So that is pretty incredible when you consider the cost of mining uh, Bitcoin or you know even just sending a Bitcoin transaction. So very, very cool there. And I wanted to show you guys this here talking about the power uh, consumption debate that we're seeing going forward. Many people, many countries uh, are looking at green energy. You know, we can see the rise of electric vehicles. So now as far as electricity, how have we been gaining a lot of this electricity is what we're seeing here. As far as energy consumption, uh, coal is probably one of the biggest um, electricity generators that the globe has been using uh, for years, for decades. And what we can see based on this infographic, this is from Visual Capitalist, uh, this is talking about how we're going to be transitioning uh, energy consumption as a global scale going from more recent back in 2018 to the future back uh, all the way up until 2040. So we can see oil, natural gas, coal, all have their prominent roles within the global economy. One thing I did want to point out here is a renewable energy sector just really tearing it up. I think that we can see, like according to this infographic, uh, solar wind is going to increase by over 300%. Modern bioenergy almost doubling. Um, nuclear also increasing quite substantially. Hydro as well. So I think that as far as generating electricity, uh, clean energy is going to be a very prominent concern going forward. So guys, that is some of my thoughts regarding the energy issue, talking about cryptocurrencies. I feel like Cardano is paving the way with proof of stake, trying to solve this energy debate. So let me know what you guys think about all that down in the comments section below. I would love to hear from you guys. If you do find some value from this video, if you enjoyed it, let me know. Drop a like. Be sure to share this video if you did find some value. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. All right, everyone, take care.